How's everybody doing? We're back again with another quick chess tips video. Uh, I'm getting a lot of requests on the chess.com website. People want to know about openings. So this video is going to be focused a little bit on openings, but it's also going to have some mid game, some middle game uh, ideas as well. And we'll start with the board here and I'll go through the opening moves and show you what's going on. The main focus of this lecture is going to be about creating weaknesses in the opening, weak squares. So let me flip the board here so you can see uh, Black's perspective. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. We're going to run through some opening moves here, and then we'll reach the position that I'm going to talk about. g6, the accelerated dragon. c4, he plays a Maroxy bind type structure. Bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, knight g4, queen takes g4, Knight takes d4, queen back to d1, knight to e6, rook to c1, queen a5, bishop d3, b6, castle. And here's the position that we're going to start from. And black's next move may be surprising. It will probably be surprising to most of you guys. And that move is g5. Now, what's the purpose of this move? A lot of people will think that black's trying to attack white's king here, but that has nothing to do with it. He's playing g5 to gain control of the e5 square. And how is he doing that? Well, g5 prevents white from playing f4, okay, to hit e5. So he's indirectly controlling g5 by preventing a white, p a white pawn from pushing to kick a piece out. So he's gaining control of the e5 square with this move. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue here. Queen d2, bishop b7, rook f d1, d6. So we see we have a firm grip on e5 square. a3, h5, rook c2, bishop d4. Why does he exchange the dark square bishops? Well, White's dark square bishop is the only piece that can influence the dark squares on e5, so he exchange it. b4, queen e5. And then black has, as we can see here, this is the, the end of our little lecture here, black has good control over the dark squares, particularly the e5 square. And we can see this is good. You might not be convinced of this, so we'll show you another opening line that is somewhat similar. It has the same concept. e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6. We have a knight orf, very sharp. Bishop g5, e6, f4, bishop e7. I play this line myself, and it's a very aggressive line for both sides. Queen c7. Castle, we're following book moves right now. Oops, knight bd7, bishop d3. Now, this is very common. I've had this exact position, and people have played this exact move against me. h6, and once we retreat, g5. Again, the idea of this move is if you take with the pawn here, we gain control of the e5 square. That's black's whole concept. So let's say we do take, f takes, and then we play. 95, and we've landed on, on our square that we want. Queen e2, and now this is similar to a Slav type move, knight fg4. Now it's pinned here. Knight f3, h takes g5, and now we have the e5 square. And as you can see, uh, white's piece is here. His d3 bishop and c3 knight aren't too... Active yet they have no good they have no good squares to go to everything is blocked off there so play so bishop takes g5 bishop takes g5 check knight takes g5 queen c5 and then uh, blacks down a pawn here but he has a very active position the dark squares as we can see are being infiltrated by uh, by black. He has an active rook here. So as we can see, fighting for squares is a very good idea in a lot of openings. That's the whole concept. You're fighting for central squares. And a lot of the times, 
it doesn't take a direct central move to influence the center, but as we saw, the G5 move indirectly influences the E5 square. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like this, please uh, hit the like button. And thank you guys for watching.